Hello all, Lauren Riley here. I just wanted to speak about uh, my driving experience with uh, having a disability. As you all know, my specific disability is cerebral palsy. And so the time from, you know, for me getting my driver's license or trying to anyway dates back all the way to 2005. I mean, I live in the state of Maryland, so I don't know the uh, exact law, every law for each state, but in the state of Maryland, when you have a disability like mine and a list of other ones that I can't that I can't name off the top of my head here, you have to go through the medical advisory board, and basically, they have you go through extra hoops in order to get your license. So what I had to do first is go through a clinical evaluation where I had to do a lot of, um, I guess, things on paper, like connecting dots from going from A to 1, B to 2, C to 3, stuff like that. And they would, and these dots would be scattered all around a piece of paper, so they wouldn't be all lined up, and I would have to take a pencil or a highlighter and go in order. So it's kind of, it's kind of stupid, because, I mean, go you know, drawing a line of paper is a lot different than uh, driving in real life. So... I don't see how paper and, uh, you know, being attentive in a real vehicle is the same thing, but okay. I actually ended up failing that test you know, numerous times, and so I cried my my eyes out. I don't know what it was, probably because of the way they showed it, because the way they showed it, they demoed it, was like 1, A to 1 in a straight line, 2 to B, and so forth, and then all of a sudden, you know, they, they pulled the fast one, so... With all of that being said, I finally got through, you know, back in 2005, 2006, and then I went to see, you know, a driving specialist, and then she took me on the road, and we practiced a lot of turns in a graveyard, because she didn't like the way I was turning, but I eventually got through it, and uh, what I actually drove all, all the way up to Pennsylvania, the borderline there one time, and back. She told my father and I that I was going to pass, or that she was going to pass me, and recommend to the medical advisory board that I could get my license. It turns out that uh, when I got the letter from the medical advisory board, she told them that I wasn't, you know, very attentive and that I failed. So that was, you know, not very good. And then I, you know, decided to quit for a while. I went off to college. In the middle, towards the end of my college experience, that's when I decided to get my license again, around 2010, 2011. Only this time, I. What the weird thing is, is that you can't you. You have to get it in a certain time frame, or your I guess results expire, and you have to um, redo it again, because the, the medical advisory board wants to make sure that nothing has changed in within six months, which is bullshit because CP is not um, degenerative over time. It's a birth defect. You're the, you're the same way throughout your whole life. Sorry, I had an itch. Anyway. So I took the uh, clinical evaluation again, only this time with the guy up my, that my father knew up in Frederick, a city that's about an hour away from me. But anyway, uh, you know, I passed the, the test, and then he took me out, the uh, this guy. You know, he said that I had difficulty you know, keeping the car in a straight line. And uh, basically, he, th he said that I did good in residential areas and uh, places that are 30 miles an hour or less, but when it came to driving in, I guess... Um, on the on the highway, like or in a city, at like fifty miles an hour, and in crowded spots, that's when I, you know, started to uh, really drive poorly. And so I passed like six hours of driving, you know, that the state requires for the instructor. He made a, he he wrote up in a letter that I could not drive, you know, or could not take the test until after a hundred hours worth of um driving with someone else, which which ended up being my father. And so I got my learner's permit in 2011, and then I spent like two years practicing. They, you know, I couldn't, you can't renew a learner's permit, I found out. You actually have to take the written test over again and pass everything to get it, just to get, just to get the new one. And so for then, because I went back to, back to the driving specialist again, the guy in Frederick, and then he told me that I still needed more practice. And so two more years went by, or close to it. Then I went back to the guy to see if I could drive up to 200 hours, and then he still told me that I had not changed one bit since the last time he saw me. 
It was very disheartening. I drove in like a uh, 2010 HHR. It was a brown color. And so the hand controls, the way a handicapped person drives, or the way I drove, was, was with a push-pull lever. Push down for brake, pull back for gas, and then you would use a suicide knob to turn like this. So, but I have, you know, heard about other, I guess, equipment for um, hand controls. There's one where you can, like, um, I guess, towards a motorcycle where you can have the, uh, where you can kind of twist, um, I guess, the bar to make it go and not break. Instead of pushing down and pushing ba and pulling back. I know that there was a fun friend of my brother's. He couldn't see very well, so he was not able to drive in the state of Maryland. But if he moved to Virginia, then he was able to, then he could have gotten his license because he was somewhat legally blind in this state or considered legally blind within the state of Maryland. I'm not sure what his vision was overall. But I mean, hopefully he went and did it. But to be honest, overall, I think that the uh, requirements for a handicapped person to drive are, are too strict. I mean, with the way everyone else drives out there on the road, I mean, what, what, what honestly could go wrong? I mean, I could see if someone was like, you know, obviously legally blind or had, you know, extreme trouble. But I mean, most most people don't drive that great to begin with. They don't put on their, uh, you know, blinkers. They don't do crap. So, I mean, I don't know why I was held back. But either way, I mean, I went in there knowing that I, could, you know, could fail. And after that, I figured, you know, that I would stop learning how to drive because, you know, after four years of driving two, over 200 hours in practice, if I wasn't going to, you know, be very good enough to take the test then, even after two instructors that took me, one in 2005, 2006, and the other one in uh, 2011, 2012, and so forth, then, uh, you know, that was, that's fine for me. Not that I did, don't want to still, I guess, do it. Maybe one day, once I can get enough money, maybe I can get a new car and put the hand controls on again, which cost about $1,000, you know, a tilt. But, you know... Maybe one day I'll get there. Anyway, I mean that's that's just that story. And what the, the weird thing is is that uh, my first instructor put me on hold for the longest time because her daughter was having a baby, and I don't know and I don't know what went on with that because all I needed was one more lesson to complete the whole I guess program, and it took and it took her four to five months. For this person to actually take the final lesson and then when she tells me that I pass then she tells the MBA that I failed so very strange very ridiculous I'm not too much of, of, of a fan of that but uh, you know it is what it is I learned a lot and uh, I drove to work a few times I did pretty well with it I think overall the biggest problem that I had was uh, I guess turning and then putting on the gas at the same time when making a turn that was my biggest issue and maintaining the correct speed sometimes I would go 40 in a uh, f you know 50 mile an hour road or that's what the speed limit would be I would either go too fast or a little bit too fast or uh, a good bit too slow I could never find the heavy medium between I guess going the right speed and I guess breaking distance but then again I mean it's not that I traveled much anyway but still I mean at least you know I, I've avoided things like I guess car insurance car payments uh, getting getting things looked at so I mean there is somewhat of an, of an advantage of um, not being able to drive but then again I guess the less things you have in your name the, the difficult it is to actually uh, establish credit, but that's a different story. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to get into that now. I mean, basically, what I use for travel at this point is either Uber, Lyft. I'll probably use the begin to use the bus at some point after my big move. But I thought I would just give you guys, you know, a story on what 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 it's like to drive in hit controls. I know that I made this video previously, but I wanted to make you know a better video about this. In better quality that way it looks good and uh, for the most part it sounds good I know that I speak fast for some people but it's okay I'm learning hopefully 
you know, I'll be able to make even better videos in the future within the next few months. And this way, you know, mistakes and other the crap that I'm doing, you know, won't happen. I appreciate everyone's time, and uh, please like and subscribe and click the bell if you, you know, if you like what I have to say. If not, don't worry about it. Keep pushing forward and stay epic.